Hello you gorgeous people, this is Chris from Techspert and these wee buggers here are the iPhone XS and XR, two of Apple's latest smartphones designed to drain your bank accounts of all that pesky money stuff. I've had them both stashed in my pants for the last month or so to see how they actually stack up and if they're worth your hard earned cash. And if you're a bit too scared to look, the iPhone XR starts at 749 quid and the iPhone XS starts at a cool grand. Ouchies. So first up, the iPhone XS is actually the more compact of these two blows, sporting a 5.8 inch display, which these days is positively miniature. The iPhone XR has a 6.1 inch screen, while those bezels are even chunkier. So while one handed use is just about possible on the XS, you'll need hands like f***ing Slenderman with the XR. However, the iPhone XR does boast a selection of vibrant colours to choose from, just like the old iPhone 5C. Ah, remember that? iPhones that cost less than 500 quid? Good times. You can grab the XR in yellow, blue, pink, or coral as Apple insists on calling it, and a gorgeous product red crimson hue, which is easily the best of the bunch. Oh, and you can also buy it in boring old white and black like this model here. I don't actually mind the black hue that much, it kind of matches the colour of my rotten, hateful soul. Apple boasts that these new iPhones have the most durable screen of any smartphone, but of course that hasn't stopped them from being scratched to bits from just a month of general use. I would definitely recommend a screen protector if you want to keep your expensive new toy all pristine. Both of these new iPhones are also water and dust resistant. The XS has an official IP68 rating, while the XR has an IP67 rating. So what the blum and flip does that mean? Well, the XS can basically withstand depths of up to 1.5 meters for up to half an hour, while the XR can only manage about a meter for the same length. But basically, either way, if you accidentally drop these phones in the urinal while you're drunkenly texting your ex one evening, you're gonna be fine. Just give them a good wash off first, yeah? When it comes to media chops, both phones absolutely smash it, although the XS is technically best. That 5.8 inch OLED panel is itched you already and packs in 458 pixels per inch for super sharp high contrast visuals. Meanwhile, the XR sports a 6.1 inch IPS LCD. There's bugger all HDR support so contrast levels aren't as strong, with those blacks noticeably less deep when you stick them both side by side. While the XS also excels when it comes to natural colour reproduction for things like skin tones. Both iPhone displays are also seriously bright, although again the XS is just a smidgen better, especially as that viewing angle increases. And with its 326 ppi resolution, visuals aren't quite as crisp and detailed on the iPhone XR either. But to be perfectly honest, these differences are only really noticeable when you stick the XR and the XS side by side and watch exactly the same clip on them both. Otherwise, the XR is perfectly fine for just kicking back with a bit of Netflix or something. It's just a damn shame that there are Android phones that cost hundreds of pounds less that sport an OLED display that's better than the XR's LCD. As for the speaker output, there's no real difference. They're both pretty loud, but the sound quality is of course typically crap. And you'll need a dongle to get wired up with old 3.5mm headphones. You get Apple's latest iOS 12 stuffed onto both of these blows, and the overall experience is basically identical. You get updates here to quite a few features like Do Not Disturb and a new nanny feature as well which basically tries and stops you from watching too much shit on YouTube until you wonder why on earth you enabled it in the first place and just knock it straight back off again. There's nothing particularly exciting in the new bits but it all works just fine and the usual limited amounts of customization are on offer. Of course, like last year's iPhone 10, there's no fingerprint security on here. The only way to unlock these beasts is with your gorgeous mug or a bit of old school pin action. Thankfully, the Face ID works fine most of the time, although it does really struggle once things get dark and it really doesn't like me first thing in the morning. But then I can't really blame it because at 6am I closely resemble a pissed off hairless gorilla with a toothache. I did see the occasional little glitch on these phones such as the occasional Wi-Fi dropout which is a bit weird but then to be fair all new OS's have all of these little bugs despite all that months of beta testing that they go through. Here's hoping that by Christmas all these little issues are stamped out. Both the iPhone XR and the XS pack in Apple's Mega Bonnet A12 chipset, which is one of the most powerful mobile platforms as we head into 2019. Of course, being Apple and being as awkward as ever, they haven't actually disclosed how much memory is stuffed inside these things, but various breakdowns seem to agree that you get 3 gigs of RAM here in the iPhone XR and 4 gigs in the XS. Does the extra RAM give the XS an edge? Well, I haven't noticed any difference in the everyday running or my PUBG mobile sessions. You can blast through games on either iPhone on top detail settings with no stutter or lag to speak of. So if you're after something with serious grunt, that cheaper handset will still perform, as you'd kind of expect from a smartphone that costs 749 quid. For the first month, I haven't had any issues with battery life, although neither iPhone excels in that department either. You'll get a day of play per charge from the iPhone XS if you don't absolutely hammer it and that's about your whack. While the iPhone XR is a wee bit better. However, they did do well in the basic video drain test, streaming YouTube stuff with mobile deactivated and that display brightness turned right down. In that, the XR survived for 15 hours from a full charge, while the XS died much more quickly at just over 12 hours. 
And when it's time to power back up again, both the 10R and the 10S support wireless charging. There's a bit of a difference when it comes to the storage options too. The 10R tops out at 256 gigs, where you get up to 512 gigs here on the 10S. But to be honest, that's a wee bit excessive unless you're going to be shooting a shitload of 4K video. The final difference between these two apples is their camera tech slapped on the back end. The premium 10S has dual 12 megapixel cameras, an f1.8 wide angle lens and an f2.4 telephoto lens which offers a 2x optical zoom and a 10x digital zoom. That telephoto lens has sadly been culled for the 10R, so you just get the wide angle jobby on its lonesome with up to 5 times digital zoom. When you compare photos taken on these phones, there's absolutely no difference. Daylight, nighttime, it all basically looks the same, with identical colour reproduction and the same results in high contrast shots. The only real difference is a greater clarity on the 10S snaps when you zoom into your subject, which is to be expected. And even though the 10R only uses a single lens, both of these phones boast a portrait mode with advanced bokeh and depth control. All Apple's own words, of course. This works fine on both iPhones, although the 10S can produce more background blur thanks to its dual lens setup. As for your home movies, there's an all difference beyond that optical zoom again. Both the 10S and the 10R shoot up to 4K resolution footage at 30 or 60 frames per second, with slow mo capture at up to 240 FPS. And as usual, that image stabilization is pretty damn smooth, even when you're wandering about the place at 4K. Overall, it's good quality stuff. There's no gap between these handsets when it comes to the glamour selfies either. You get some megapixel f2.2 snapper which once again can shoot portrait photos complete with dodgy studio lighting effects. So as you can see there, the iPhone XS is the better, more advanced phone thanks to its OLED screen, zoom lens and slightly better specs. That said, the differences are often very slight and only really obvious when you directly compare the two side by side. So therefore, personally, I'd say I'd rather save myself 250 quid on the XS and just bag myself a colourful version of the XR instead. Or alternatively, just get myself a OnePlus 6T and save myself a further 250 quid on top of that. So what do you think? Are you still tempted by one of the latest iPhones? Am I just a raging Android fanboy? Be great to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers!